welcome to Fable Hunters. I'm Ada. I'm Sing. And we're, we're going to open some stuff. So Sing, what are we going to do today? Um, we're going to open some slabs oh. from a very, very valued and prominent member of mm. our community. Tupac? Yeah, but before we do that, um, this member gave us an exclusive interview where mm. we submitted questions to ask him about his collection, his um, mindset as a whale, the yeah. mindset of a whale, so to speak. Yeah. So uh, you remember a couple weeks ago? Yes. Yeah, we, we filmed something and we talked about Secret Lab. Yes, we and got some products from it. Yes, we did. We got some yeah. swag from Secret yes. Lab. Um, right after I ordered my large batch of Welcome to Wraith, uh -huh. I was contacted by a lady named Tammy from uh -huh. Secret Lab. And she was like, hey, our co-founder, really likes flesh and blood wow. and you've we've heard that you have a line into a yeah. large amount of flesh and blood uh can you share your sources with us and i'm like hey tammy who are you? yeah who are you <laughs> i don't have i don't have enough product myself yeah. i'm not going to share product when i didn't get enough yeah and i also mentioned that um when i went back to channel fireball mm -hmm. for another trench i guess either tammy or tammy's boss alaric um, they're resourceful enough to figure it out themselves and they went and negotiated their own deal. Oh, and there was, they skipped yeah, you. They, they just bypassed wow. me all together because they're, they're smart. It was actually Alaric, Alaric Chu, co-founder of Secret Lab, that entered and took a huge position in Flesh and Blood. Like a lot of people like to call themselves whales or think that they're big buyers. Mm -hmm. This is on a scale that... I don't think many people can even Never seen before. Yeah, imagine. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And Alaric, I didn't really put two and two together until I saw Alaric just quietly lurking in uh, Fab and Seals on Facebook. Wow. Yeah, he was joining all of the breaks, all the leagues, and oh. he was just, he was active, but he was very quiet. And I'm like, mm. what's up with this guy? Yeah. I, that name sounds familiar. Yeah. I looked him up and I was like, oh, okay, Secret Labs is... Wow, hey. they do how much revenue? Oh, oh my God, okay. Right. That said, we've since become friends. We have slabs from Alaric himself that have come back from Beckett. I'd say the results were uh, pretty decent, mm -hmm. but uh, we've got an, an interview and yes. some questions to go through. Let's get to this uh, interview. Yes, we've got some juicy questions here. Yeah. All yeah. right, so I'll be the interviewer and you will basically talk about- I'll step in for Alaric. Yes. And we'll both put in our own additional comments and thoughts yep. about everything. So go okay. ahead. So number one, rumor has it that you have a large collection in the millions. What does it consist of and how much did it cost you? Okay, I'm answering as Alaric. Alaric says, it is quite evenly distributed between raw cold foils, slabs, and sealed mm, products. Smart guy. Yeah, yeah. A good diversification. Yeah. Got to diversify your bonds. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this would not have been possible had it not been for the many honest sellers in the community that always came through and to the shops that have worked tirelessly to promote this great game. A special thanks to John Sasso from Channel Fireball, Mark from Guff Games, and Agora Hobby. Mm, wow. So it's a big collection that's a large scot there, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huge collection. Uh, we've talked about the size and the scope. Yeah. And even with these first batches, I was only trusted with very, very little part. Mm. And just the fact that by virtue of how diversified and how many cold foils, yeah. how many special edition scarce print. Yeah. Uh, items that Alaric has, oh like God. any experienced collector will know. Wow, this is this collection runs really, really, really deep. Um, I'm sure Alaric lives in a museum of cards. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know. Right, right. Yeah. I'd like to. I like to see. Maybe that's like the Fabled Hunters HQ Annex or oh my God. Fabled Hunters yeah. Singapore. I know. Right. That'd be awesome. Yeah. All right, so we'll go, move on to the next question. Mm -hmm. I've got to say that my share BGS tender with the Bay promo cold foil holds a special meaning to sing. Is there a favorite piece in your collection or uh, is there a price if you're willing to part with it for or is it priceless? I've, I have had the good fortune of having to come 
to own some very cool pieces, which to me are priceless. Priceless, so this is tough. If I were to pick one, it would probably be the cold foil heart of fine bell that I pulled mm -hmm. while opening a box of WTR with my wife. That's kind of sweet, right? It's so sweet. Yeah, mm -hmm. just couples, a couple that cracks packs together, Aww, stays together. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> to personally open a heart was always on the to-do list, but opening it together with her made the memory extra special. Like, I, I basically said this about AAA, and this is yeah. Alaric himself saying yeah. the same thing. It's like, yeah. it's great that a heart is scarce. It's great that a heart yeah. is super valuable, but yeah. that moment, like, who the did memory. you pull the heart? The memory, yeah. the experience yeah. is truly priceless. And that's how you know yeah. those are the real people. Those are the true Definitely. people that are following this game, that are bought in yeah. and holding up and really just enjoying, cherishing Legend Story Studios product. All right, we'll move on to the next one. We collectors often look back and reflect on our best buys or our missed opportunities. Was there a big one that got away from you? So Alaric says, I focus on the things that are controllable and completely disregard the things I can't and one of those things is trying to time the market. I'm happy with the time that I entered FAB. Sure, I could have gotten the product for exponentially less just weeks earlier, but I don't give it a second thought. I like the product. Yeah. See, this is from a lot of- Absolutely. Very different, yep. very yep. positive, optimistic, and enjoying the product always comes first. Come first. Comes first before yeah. anything, any considerations. That's yeah. what, you know, being really bought in. Yeah, about. definitely. Rudy from Alpha Investment says, I like the game. And yeah, he, he likes the game. Alaric likes attitude. the game. And that yeah. attitude is first and foremost. Definitely. Like we're gonna we're gonna talk about this in our monarch openings and whatnot. There's that group of people that came in, they they were like, Oh, go fab, go fab. But they bought their monarch at $150, 200 yeah. 250 dollars. And you know, the second monarch goes under five hundred dollars, they just liquidate, they head yeah. for the hills. They're paper hands. Yeah. No, th this isn't even about being diamond hands. This is just about, hey, I like the product. I yeah. really like what Legend Story Studios is doing. And that's the right mindset to have. Yeah, viewers. definitely. Yeah. So we also wanted to learn more about Alaric's history with TCG and the FAB community. Mm -hmm. And the first question was, were you always into TCGs? And how did you hear about that? Okay. Alaric says, growing up, one of my favorite things was visiting comic book stores near my house, like me, mm -hmm. rifling through miniatures, drafting, and collecting Pokemon cards. As I grew older, I immersed myself in video games and my focus drifted away from TCGs, but the love of collecting has always been deeply rooted in me. And by the way, that's super true because Alaric's superhero, super businessman origin story was, he was a Starcraft, a uh, computer game professional. Mm -hmm. And I think at that time, the chairs that were being made were yeah, so inferior, they're uncomfortable. Yeah. And he just innovated the whole system. Uh, th let's let's go back to the question. In recent years, says Alaric, and with the explosion of Pokemon, I found myself missing the first edition era of Pokemon where cards were truly exclusive. exclusive. That sounds like another TCG game, I right? Know. I miss those days too. Yeah. I happened to chance upon Rudy's channel and that was when I first heard about Fab. Mm -hmm. Being a startup co-founder, I was very impressed by the universe that James and LSS had built and also what they were looking to achieve. Wow. Yeah, That's... yeah. It was really refreshing just hearing yeah. about a game that was mm -hmm. about the stores, Definitely. that taking care of the stores, really taking care of the players, yeah. giving the players a game they wanted, a yeah. game where it could just be like back in the days, mm -hmm. like back in the 90s when people just Definitely. said, hey, my little escape is going to the local game store, playing a good game, playing it with good people mm -hmm. that really just wanted to have a good time. Yeah. So that's that's like what Fab is today. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool because I, a lot of people like the game for different reasons and it's really interesting to learn why Alaric got into Fab and stayed in the community and has so much faith. It's very yeah. impressive. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So now we're going to go to the next one. So we were also wondering what um, Alaric was impressed by um, within the community. Okay. So Alaric's answer is, one thing that stood out to me in particular 
was the way that James and the LSS team really focused on creating a TCG with players and collectors in mm. mind. They launched limited print runs and took the bold step of releasing run numbers, a rare move in the era of burgeoning demand, and made the decision not to use the commonly used rotation set format, basically. Yeah. Basically printing a couple sets and then exiting those sets and then just printing more and more, just uh -huh. leaving all, like LSS leaves all their product playable nice. and you know appropriate and relevant. Nice. So this approach is difficult. It takes individuals with guts and conviction to challenge the norm yeah. and to willingly hold themselves to exceptionally high standards that would be required to conquer the unique challenges. So, well, I mean, we kind of discussed about this before, where no other TCG companies have ever really released the number of prints. Yep, yep. Yeah, and then FAB is one of the pioneers. It, absolutely, they're pioneers. They're transparent, yeah. they believe in scarcity, they believe in collectability, yeah. and they believe in just putting everything, putting their whole reputation mm -hmm. behind their product and just yeah. giving it their all. And we can see with Monarch that really happened, that the game just got so much more dynamic, so much more intense, so much more complex, but fun at the same time with uh, the, uh, you know, with the release of Monarch. Definitely. We actually got a answer from Alaric himself. So we asked him, why did you decide to go public as a fab collector? Alaric says, credit goes to you for this one, Sane. <laughs> I don't know that I would have gone public had we not gotten around to talking. I've always tended to be more of a lurker when it comes to my collecting hobbies. That's true, I found him as a lurker. I kicked over the rock and dug him out. Uh, I've also had the good fortune of having met a lot of cool people in the community, and that's really what it's about. Getting to know great people from around the world that you had literally no odds of ever meeting, all because of Fab. That's so true. Yeah, exactly. It's all yeah. about the, the friends you make along the way. Yeah. Uh, I'm meeting some you know, really successful people and yeah. just surrounding myself with positive people. Definitely. And just, that just drives me to, you know, push harder yeah. and, uh, yeah. you know, try to strive for success, strive yeah. for better. Yeah. It probably means a lot to you too, saying because you, you made a, you know, huge impression on Alaric. And oh yeah, of course. You brought him out, like from like, yeah, the I, back room. He, pro <laughs> he probably, he didn't want to go, he didn't want to poke his head out from behind yeah. the curtain, but yeah. you know what? He's with us, he's a happy member of the community, and we're all just really looking forward to the next step of Flesh and Blood and what LSS is gonna do. Yeah, the definitely. Community. So the next question is, as someone who was a pro who was a pro gamer and now still closely connected to the gaming community, how do you feel about Flesh and Blood's core mission to return to the Flesh and Blood? Is it blown up? Nostalgia? Or do you think that's something that's important for us to preserve? Okay, Alaric says, I understand the reasoning behind this philosophy, and I think it's great for building a tightly knit community. At the same time, being somebody with a schedule that can sometimes be hectic and somewhat unpredictable, I'd like the avenue to be able to play online and to be matched with players mm -hmm. seamlessly. I'm sure there are a whole lot of nuances and complexities to be making a physical game digital James and LSS will know best when and if this should be done. And that's from Alaric. Yeah, he's, he's straight yeah. up, but yeah. my personal take is that James White had a plan, he had a mission, yeah. and he's been pretty clear about sticking to in the flesh and blood and yeah. not going digital. Yeah. Hopefully, fingers crossed, James and LSS, when they grant us their interview, we can dig a little deeper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can still play, even if it's not in a digital form, just with a camera. Camera, yeah. yeah. All right, the next one. Do you see any parallels between TCGs and esports? Okay, Alaric says, TCGs and esports both draw a similar type of crowd. Individuals who are passionate about their hobby, willing to dedicate time and effort into growing the community, and always keen to share their expertise. I've been fortunate to meet great lifelong friends through both TCG and esports, and I hope that the growth of both communities continues over the next few years. I couldn't agree more with that. I've gone on multiple trips with friends in the Magic the Gathering community, wow. soon to be friends in the Fab community. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna travel together, gonna hang out together. 
I'm gonna, you know, be uh, doing something TCG related for July 4th. Maybe we'll get a wow. little Fabled Hunters crossover exclusive then. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of fun times ahead. All right, the next one. From gaming, building your business, and now collectibles, you've gone really big. Do you attribute that to passion, a competitive spirit, or something else? Is there a hobby, passion, or project that you like to explore more? Alaric says, I am competitive and extremely obsessive about whatever I set my focus on. Mm. It's really about becoming the best I can possibly be in anything that I do. Wow. It's hard enough to find time for both gaming and TCGs, to be completely honest. So I'm not looking for anything else right now. I would be interested to support initiatives that can continue to foster positivity in the flesh and blood community. That's really Yeah, cool. I mean, it's really, really well said. As, yeah. as a founder CEO myself, yeah. um, I really believed in my business. I, you know, just yeah. poured 100% of my non unconscious time of my waking hours yeah. i poured a hundred percent of my energy into my business i'm sure yeah, alara same. did too i'm sure you are yeah, as well same. right now ada and yeah. you know you just have to relentlessly pursue it yeah. to be the best at, you know the best yes. you that yeah. you can possibly be definitely and in the collector community it's kind of like that too i'm here Laric is is here to probably collect yes. and build the nicest collection the nicest slabs the yeah. most sealed product, a diverse range of products all over the place yeah. so that uh, they can be proud of, you know, what they're holding. Yes. All right. Next one. Secret Lab. There's a lot of cool collabs. What's the process? Uh, what's the process of working on a new chair? And what about the possibility of a fab chair? <laughs> a fab chair, you say, eh? <laughs> so Alaric's answer is our collaborations are a reflection of companies and brands that we are truly passionate about. So that is how it usually starts. One instrumental part of the process is a design phase which encompasses everything from ideation, material selection, rendering, prototyping, etc. We work very closely with our partners, so there's a lot of back and forth, bouncing ideas off of each other. The reason why we can create these successful collaborations is because we are fans in the first place, which really does make a big difference. As for a fab chair, you are going to have to ask James about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Hey, you know what? If they make like a monarch chair, they should totally like get the elements of like rift bind. Yeah. You know, that shadow card. Yes. As well yes. as any of the light cards, any prism cards, just a little bit of yellow and just something like glisten with a sword in the middle. Yeah. I got so many ideas <laughs> from the monarch art. LSS, if you're listening, we want yeah. some. <laughs> Yeah, cheers. Come yes, on. That'd be awesome. That'd be so cool. All right. We got All one right. to take it home, right? Yeah. So a lot of has some parting comments that he provided to us and we'll be rooting for you, Alaric. So uh, Alaric uh, closes with, it's always the people that make anything great. Anything. I'd like to thank all the great people I've met and have helped me build my collection. Big thanks to James and LSS for creating this great collecting at TCG. And last but not least, Saint, thank you for being the standout role model in the community on top of being extremely generous with your time and knowledge. Thank you for helping me out with my submission and all the advice. I've also included something as a small reward for loyal supporters of your channel. Mm. So he did include a little something. We're running a little short on time. We're gonna go through some hopefully all but some of these slabs from the submission because we got some exciting things Ooh. coming back from Beckett. We're going to go to overhead and then we'll tell you about the uh, small reward. All right, we're back on the overhead. Yes. Uh, the camera is extra, extra high today because we've got Giant. a, yeah, we've got a huge play mat. We've got an exclusive one of one product mm. from the Rudy in the North. Rudy Diudane mm -hmm. of 17 Creative Endeavors. Yes. He, um, his cameo, he produced the special black label oversized play mat That's that cool. essentially fits slabs wow. perfectly. So you can play with all your slabs yeah. everywhere. And um, yeah, he asked me what number I wanted. I actually put 7, 11, 2012. 
for the anniversary date between my wife and I. 99 means uh, for a long time, forever. So 7 11 2012 forever. And that is a black label 10 playmat. Rudy Diudane made it for us. He hand drew heart, eye, shard, and now wow. the great library of Solana. Beautiful. Yep. And uh, for Rudy, certificate of authenticity, the pristine playmat, prototype print number zero, the four fables. So lifetime warranty signed by Rudy. Mm. So yeah, thank you so much, Rudy D, for being a valued member of our community. Thank you for such an exclusive playmat. And thank you for your friendship. <laughs> so let's get to Alaric slabs. Firstly, we will go to Ira Crimson Haze mm. Cold Foil. Actually, let's get a little closer here. Mm. That's a little more manageable. Yeah. Wow, but it's a huge playmat. Just it an is. idea. Huge playmat. Ira Crimson Haze. Nine basic plus plus plus. Another Ira. This one's better, nine quad plus plus, surface, surface 10. Yeah. You've got Reinar, see, gold it's label. Five. Yeah, doesn't it look nicer in gold yeah. label? Everything just looks nicer when they're they're inside a gold True. label, right? And we've got a nine Katsu. basic, Katsu the Wander. Again, gold Katsu, 9.5. Another one. Another gold Katsu. Another one. Another gold Katsu with two tens. That yeah. is super sexy. What happened with the corners? Let's see. Oh, there's one little thing over there. Is there a second one? You know what? They they were a little stingy on the corners. I, I think. Craft them. I don't know. I'll talk to. But you know what? The edges here. Yeah. You crack it. You're gonna get dinged on the edges. Uh, They're gonna get you one way or another. You got a nine point five on edges. Yeah. Man, I think if anything, the corners should be nine point five and the yeah. edges should be nine. But it's still a very health grade. Mm. We've got Durant the Bay, basic plus plus plus. We've got another Durantha Bay in gold. Gold on gold. Ain't that beautiful? Yeah. Gold on gold Durantha Bay. Two Durantha Bays. Ooh, Dude. I think alaric has got a thing for Durantha Bay as well, right? Uh -huh. He's got his own Durantha Bay harem going right here. We've got a Dash, nine basic plus plus. 8.5, pesky, those pesky corners. Mm. Oh, that one, yeah, you see, that, down. that, that, Big Nick right there. Yeah. That's not a feather. That's yeah. actually structural damage to the card. Mm -hmm. Top right, bottom left. That 8.5 is definitely deserved. But this one's better. Nine quad plus plus with 10 edges. Just to see the 10 edges. Man, just for the viewers at home, that's even any 10. Any 10 in a card is already very difficult. Yeah. That larger Nick right there, right? That Nick, that will bring it down to a nine. So mm -hmm. this is deserved. Now, centering. It's not so visible up here because these are closer, yeah. but down here, left and right, it seems to get a little thinner down here. This mm -hmm. one is thicker than there. And yeah, that's why you've got nine centering for dash. Okay, viewers, we didn't forget about y'all. Fable Hunters fans Ooh. from Secret Lab. What's in wow. it? What do you think is in it, Ada? I don't know. Yeah, we're wow. gonna, we'll we're, find out. We, we need to find out. We will find out. We got a little bit more to cover. Yes. And then we'll we'll see what uh, is in store for the fans. So we've got nine basic. Oh, look at that. 210. Scabskin leathers. Mm. Oh, man. Ooh, well. You know what? You weren't you weren't you weren't dodging an eight point five. This is definitely yeah. not nine. So that's that's deserved. Corners, corners. Plate, gold tech plate. It's nice. Gold tunic. tunic. Yeah, ten edges. You were lucky to uh, pull one for the win last time, yeah. Ada. And uh, let's see, hard to find all. Oh yeah. man, what a shame. Two ten centering ten edges ten beautiful heart. 8.5 corners. Mm. Now we're on to the arcane slabs. You've got a tech heart, basic plus plus plus. We've got a gold heart, 9.5 basic plus 10 surface, skull bone cross wrap. We've got the grasp of the arc knight. We've got another grasp, even another grasp with 10 edges. Yeah. Oh, this is spicy. Why haven't we pulled one of these yet, Ada? I know. Right? Wow. This are the heart. 
Damn, uh, or the okay. shard, or the yeah. library. We need like yeah. any of the four fables. I know. <laughs> we're like the trying to be, we're the wannabe fabled hunters. I know. We're the legendary hunters for now. <laughs> okay, well, this one has 10 surface. That's a beautiful eye. Yeah. Beautiful is. eye. Shame the bottom's so big compared to the top. Mm -hmm. That bottom border, that's what yeah. gave it a nine centering. We've got a shard. Art Basic shard. plus plus. Yep, Art Knight shard and nine. And we've got Miss Shia Bay. Yeah, Shiana, Diamond Gemini. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So, got the little Fateful something, something. moment. Yes, a little bit of love from yes. Secret Lab and Alaric. Let's open it. What do we have in store for our fans? Who knows? Let's see. Okay, here goes. 